Hi there, so welcome to lecture seven of the 10 part lecture series on revamping math, a calculative approach. Now, I'm sure it seems like an extremely ambitious topic to say we're revamping math, but that is exactly what we are doing in this lecture series because we have started at the bottom like John Nash and come up with an original idea, and that is the theorem, and I call it the two-sided circle theorem. Uh, a circle has exactly two sides, and it, I know it sounds crazy, but proving it involves the fact that it has no sides and approaching infinite sides. And we're going to get on this tangent once more, no pun intended, but calculus will be the answer in proving the relationship between uh, zero and, uh, and the undetermined um, ratio. I did so many calculations on this, and what I came up with, there are applications in physics, okay? Physics is where the applications lie. So when I asked someone this, I said, how many shapes in the universe are a circle? And the person said, the earth is a circle, a star is a circle, the sun is a circle, the moon is a circle. There are so many circles, and we're talking a two-dimensional polygon, a circle. I'm sorry, not a polygon, a circle. It's not a gone. But um, what I'm saying is the ramifications of this dual-sided um, theorem of the circle, if we take it far enough and we apply, like I said, number theory and calculus to, to find a link between zero or the null set and approaching infinite and the relationship between the two, we can revamp even physics. And that was kind of what I had in mind from the beginning because pure math is pure math is great, but... Pure math will always lead to application as well. And if there's an energy reawakening in physics, and I said we were going to get ambitious, then how great would that be? What circles are in, in the universe? We have the sun, we have stars, we have black holes, we have the Big Bang singularity, we have the Earth, we have all these circles. When light, which is a line, right, tries to escape a gravitational pull, what is it faced with? It's faced with another barrier, a gravitational barrier, which is what? A circle. But is that circle actually a circle or is it a series of sides? In fact, is it a series of asymptotes, right? Asymptotes is what we mentioned. So we have this idea of shifting and rotating asymptotes. And that is going to be the crux of what we're getting at. Because an asymptote is always an undefined expression or variable or ratio or numerator over denominator, it's always something over zero. And that is the exact definition of an asymptote. So, I mean, all this by way of saying, we're coming up with this theory, the two-sided circle theory, which has a proof to it, which is difficult as all heck. And then we have these physical physics applications that could be relevant in anything to do with physics, light. And light is always energy. So, I mean, we're very ambitious here, and this is only a 10-part, 10 10-series 10 lecture. I'm now we're three and a half minutes in, but what I want to do is just continue to talk and explore where we're going with the theorem, the pure math theorem, because we're revamping math, remember? And we're going to focus less, as always, on the applications and more on the pure math theory, which is hard because it's just hard. Because where we have our ideas and no calculations, no data, no equations. But um, like I said, so I'm going to sit facing the window and back here. So what I said before was, okay, literally we have, and we might get cut out because my phone is dying. What we have is um, the idea of the two-sided circle theorem, okay? We have zero, the circle, I'll say it again, has two sides. Proof is zero and approaching infinite sides. Remember the, the polygon with the approaching infinite sides? Think of it logically smooths out to a circle. That's how you'd explain it to a kid, to a child. They would understand the smoothing out part, but be that as it may, be that as it may, there are actual calculations that can be done if we incorporate the idea of approaching infinite and not just infinity itself. Because what use would that be, right? Um, I'm going to cut the lecture short right there because we're at five minutes and I'm at 1%, I think. So this will be 
half of a lecture today, a five minute lecture. So we're at 6.5, I believe. I got to have dinner. I got to take a break. We'll be back probably tomorrow with another part of this two-part lecture. Sayonara and take care. Bye.